And here we go. Did you know that there's a National Poop Day? There definitely is. It happens on Monday, February 4th. And let's stay healthy. Details right now with the Dr. Andy, naturopathic doctor, hormone expert, uh, expert as well. Hello, Dr. Andy. Hi. Thank you for having me. What does me. it mean to be a naturopathic doctor? So essentially, naturopathic doctors focus on a really integrative approach. We want to dig a little bit deeper when it comes to your health. It's not so much about symptom management, but really finding the cause of what you're experiencing so we can go back and address what it was that got you to where you are now. Okay, now this day hasn't been around for too long. No, it's only been around for a few years, mm -hmm. uh, so it's new, but the interesting thing is that it came to be because the municipalities noticed that after a pretty significant football game, the day after, our sewage systems were more active than usual. Wow. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, and obviously, I mean, it's, it's a silly talk, but people are mm -hmm. going to joke and be silly about it, but it's an important topic, very important. Mm -hmm. Now, why is education on this topic so important? You know, it's so important because our digestive system, our daily bowel movements, all of those things tell us so much about our health. It's something I ask all of my patients every day, um, every time they come in, and some people are ready with an answer. Other people kind of look at me and think, why are you asking me this? Mm -hmm. But it can tell us so much about not what's just going on in your gut, but the rest of your body. Okay, so what does your sample, your stool, uh, tell you about tell your own us. health? Yeah. So there are a lot of things actually. So for example, IBS, so people who are suffering from constipation and diarrhea, uh, those people are more prone to things like anxiety. Um, if you have malabsorption, for example, so the color of our stool can tell us that our liver and gallbladder might not be working, we're not digesting fats properly. Uh, so a lot of other things that can be gleaned from that one, just from that one body system. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sh should you be mindful of what comes out like I mean should you have a look should you should you sort of analyze it what, what are you looking for yes everyone should look yeah. <laughs> and some patients again don't want to do that everyone should look though um, you want to make sure that again it's a solid stool about you know a few inches long anything other than that isn't necessarily normal or healthy um, you want to make sure that you're going every day and that it's a normal sort of brown color if you're noticing a pale color or if you're noticing gray or green orange those things tell us that your gallbladder might be struggling mm. a little bit you're not breaking food down um, some of those things again if you're noticing some of that orangey color could be an indication of celiac disease mm. so there are a lot of different things that can tell us just based on consistency color size okay so so are there some tips that we can be doing every day what when it comes to keeping ourselves healthy definitely yeah um, diet is the first thing so diet absolutely is essential so getting lots of great fiber in I always want people to get their fiber from the leafy greens uh, and even the healthy fats like avocado are really high in fiber as opposed to all of the grains uh, bone broth is really great as well because mm. it kind of heals your gut lining if you're someone suffering from leaky gut uh, so bone broth is really essential and then sometimes people do need to supplement so probiotics um, if you're suffering from constipation, even something as simple as magnesium could be helpful. Mm. Uh, and then stress. Stress is a big one as well that can mm -hmm. disrupt the microbiome. So managing stress every day, those are, those are key. Can I ask you what leaky gut is? Yes. Yeah. So leaky gut essentially means that the cells in our lining are supposed to be tight together, but due to inflammation, toxins, lifestyle, those little tight junctions that hold the cells together loosen. Hmm. And so things come into the gut that shouldn't be there and things move out of the gut that shouldn't be moving into our system. And that can contribute to autoimmune disease, um, anxiety, changes in our serotonin level. So it's really important that if you are suffering from leaky gut and those people are experiencing mostly diarrhea, bloating, brain fog, uh, a lot of food sensitivities. Um, so it's really important to, to manage that as well. Okay, and you, you say we should be going every day? Now, yes. now what, what if some people aren't as regular, go every second day, every third day, is that a real concern? Every second day isn't, I'm not overly concerned. The goal is always to get my patients going daily. If you go every other day, but you're not suffering from constipation or diarrhea or anything like that, then that's fine. But once you start moving to three days or, you know, some people are going once a week, then we know we have to address your, your okay. gut health. Quickly, 30 seconds, does age, uh, is that a factor? So age isn't really a factor. You can have digestive issues from birth all the way up to elderly if you've been exposed to a lot of antibiotics or if you have food sensitivities you didn't know about. So really anyone of any age, children, right. infants can be affected. All right, fun times. Uh, CampatelliHealth.com for more details, more resources. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you for being here.